before he died. So she, when she poured the oil over his, her, his feet and wiped it with her hair, that was, Jesus actually said, she's kind of anointed me ready for my burial. Bur- 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 <laughs> Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. So (coughs) Isaiah was a prophet in the Old Testament, a major prophet, and a lot of what he said in Isaiah was kind of like then fulfilled through Jesus' life. So lots of this stuff is mirrored and actually Jesus actually Jesus actually read this little bit of this, the text out in the synagogue when he went to read, to read in the synagogue. And then he said, this is fulfilled in me. So it's quite interesting um, bit of scripture because actually it's mirroring what happens when Jesus, uh, when Jesus is alive and then what Jesus did when he died and rose again. So we're going to be like kind of focusing about how this applies to us. So... We are anointed to proclaim good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness and proclaim like release from darkness for the prisoners. Um, and yeah, as you can see in this text, this is actually about freedom. So all these all these kind of instances here are about freedom. So like. People who are brokenhearted being bound up, captors being freed, prisoners being released from the darkness. And it's really interesting because I think that all of our journeys with with like Holy Spirit are about us entering into freedom, increasing levels of freedom as we kind of grow with God. So um, if you go to the next one, actually go back. Um and Jesus, in this, is giving hope um, to those who are at the bottom of the run. So the poor, the broken-hearted, the captives, the prisoners, basically the lowest in society. And so many times in his life, Jesus would literally go to these people, the lowest of society, and he'd see them and go to them and interact with them and basically be, you know, basically talk with them and heal them. So I've got a few examples of this. He um, he went to the woman at the well, who was kind of shunned by, you know, her community because she was sleeping around a lot. And he kind of <coughs> filled her with a sense of worth and love, and it changed her life. He went to he kind of became friends with women who were sex workers, like Mary Magdalene, and gave them hope. He went to the crazy people who were like mentally unstable and mm-hmm. freed them from mm-hmm. their like derision and stuff. The, he went to the sick, like the lepers, the people who were untouchable and he would like reach out to those people. He went to the hated, like Zacchaeus, who was like really hated <coughs> by everyone around him because um, he was a tax collector. And they were just like, you know, he went to all these people and then he went to poor, like women who put the coin in and he lifted her up and the lower status, the children. He kind of lifted all these people up. Um, and it's like an example of like Jesus going to all the people oh, in, his, oh. in society at his time who were considered absolutely bottom of the run. They were considered the untouchables, people who didn't, people didn't want to interact with, who were shamed all the time everywhere they went. So this is a really interesting thing. Oh. We have to kind of think about the people in our modern day who are the who are who are fall into these categories. So if you go on to the next slide, when I first became a Christian, I um, started having these visions, and this is a little one for Greg because I didn't have time to paint these pictures. So to some people's horror, I actually used a AI bot. <laughs> Kim's already like said her disgust about this this morning. So all the next images have been made by a computer because I didn't have enough time to paint them. But they're amazing images. 
which show some of the visions mm -hmm. I had when I started becoming, when I started entering into a relationship with Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the first one I had was a So me this is where you, get, you, not everyone knows how this thing works, this, this The box. AI thing. Yeah. The, AI, the AI thing is that it's a computer, you type in a sentence of what you want it to make, and then it generates straight away loads of images. So all of these pictures are based on sentences I've typed into the computer, and then these are the pictures that have come up, because I just didn't have time to paint them myself, and I didn't want to know how to start that. So the first vision I had was me in a black box, floating in space, and um, the black box was kind of like the awful depression that I was in before I became a Christian. And I was like, total mess, everything was just awful, going wrong, you know, anything you can think of. And I met, in the vision, I reached up on my tiptoes, and there was a trap door at the top of the box, and I managed to just get my fingertips through the trap door, and I could feel freedom on my fingertips. So I knew that um, freedom was possible, whereas before I was just trapped in the box, and I had no way of knowing there was anything outside of the box. So that was the first picture. It kind of did an all right job, like, but yeah, so this is like, and if you go to the next slide, there's a, some more representations of that, of like reaching up and feeling like there is actually something outside of this terrible box of closeness. The second vision I had, the next one, was diving off a cliff into light. So I was literally like that, diving down off a cliff into brilliant light. So it was this whole thing of surrendering and let going, and it was terrifying that I was falling into light. So, and the next slide as well. So that's some more pictures of this kind of thing. Really beautiful. And then the third vision I had, um, this was a bit scary. <laughs> it was like a triptych of images, so three images rolled into one kind of vision. The first one was of me completely mummified with bind, bind weeds. So my whole body was completely wrapped up. There was no place to breathe, I couldn't open my eyes and I was all wrapped up in weeds. And go on the next one. Like that, and just all kind of twizzled up. And then in the second image, the bind weeds started snapping off like that, and I was becoming free. And then the next slide, in the third image, it doesn't, the AI didn't really do it justice, but out of every single pore of my body, loads of lotus flowers were blooming. So it was almost like I was just blooming into flowers. Um, and then we have the next one. Um. Yes, this is some more pictures of what they tried to create based on that. <laughs> so these were like these amazing visions I had when I was just kind of, just on the kind of cusp of basically giving my life to God. It's just kind of this place of going from darkness into light and captivity into freedom. And they were amazing kind of symbolic vision dreams that I had of this process uh. like that. Um, so yeah, if we go on to the next one. So I was thinking about what it says about proclaim the good news. And I was thinking, if you just go up to someone on the street who has no idea about Christianity at all, and just grab them by the shoulders and go, Jesus died for you, <coughs> they might just be like, and what? Like, they might just have no concept of what that could possibly mean, like that might not be good news to them. Maybe some people might be like, oh wow, look at what, who is this person and why did they die for me, you know. But it's a little bit abstract. And I was really praying about this. And I was like, what is this good news? And I felt like God gave me this image of a woman holding a golden heart, so I put that into the AI thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we are, that the gospel, the message of the gospel, really, oh, no. is that each no. of us has got great worth and value, and that if we were the last, the only human, God's sacrifice was still taking place. And it's all about identity, that we're children of God and that we're deeply oh. precious. I actually wrote down, oh. this is from Proverbs, which is about bride. So her value is more precious than jewels, and her worth is far above rubies and pearls. So it's kind of like, the good news to all these people who are right mm. at the bottom of society is that they've got great, incredible worth, more precious than diamonds. 
and this is something that mm. we, as God's followers, are anointed to not only carry in ourselves, mm. but we're anointed to basically show other people that, tell other people that, give that gift to other people. Um, so yeah, uh, that's uh, just something for uh, us to think about when we're thinking uh, of good, uh, the good uh, news. Uh, this is the good news. The good news is that you are of such great worth that Jesus died for you and was willing to pay the price for you. Okay, so if we go on to the next one. Actually, go back, sorry. I a little bit. <laughs> I actually put a little bit here. Like, I remember someone talking to me about their experience of being a homeless person. <coughs> and they said what's the, the hardest part about being homeless is that so many people walk past them every day and ignore them entirely, so don't even look at them. So they basically f- have this kind of, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy of like, they feel like they've not got any worth, and then hundreds of people will pass them every day, basically not looking at them, thinking that they're worth, like, and it reinforces that sense of worthlessness or not having value. So that is just something to think about with, I guess, worth. And I also was thinking about some of the people in our um. community who really look past appearances mm. and really, really care for people and see like that they have great worth. So I was thinking about Darren, like he's amazing at doing this. Like mm. no matter who he interacts with, he treats those people with great worth and dignity. And Alex as well, she does the same. And also Dylan, like all these people like interact with people who a lot of other people find really frustrating. And like you're just like, oh my gosh, I just don't have any time for that person. But these people like really um, see the worth in everyone and really look after them and they're really amazing inspirational people to kind of they are they are like a living embodiment of people preaching like claiming the good news. Uh, yes, yeah, so and now you can go to the next one, yeah. So now we're moving on to like what the anointing. Mm. So oh, no, no, no. Jesus was actually anointed by the Holy Spirit, and the yeah. word Jesus Christ oh. actually means the chosen one, or the anointed one. So Jesus was basically anointed first, and because we are in his family, we receive that anointing that he has. So we're basically, what, I, what this made me think of is like, I can't actually think of any examples, but you know when like someone's made a business and then let his sons take over it, so it becomes like, Thompson and Sons. <laughs> but I just couldn't think of what that was called. What, I couldn't think of any examples. Yeah. But I was just thinking, like, it's kind of like Christ and sons and daughters. Like, we're part of the company, you know? Like, his, his business has been passed down to us in that same way. We are part of the... We're anointed like he was through the Spirit. Um, so the mantle's been passed to us yeah. through the Spirit. Um so, if you go on to the next slide. So, what I was thinking of when I was basically thinking about all this, like anointing stuff, is that we, our anointing is that we are kind of communicators of worth. So, when we're interacting with people around us, we're anointed to communicate someone's worth to them. To be like, you are a child of God, you are worth the most precious price. And that is like the anointing that got on us that we can call to. And so it's kind of like make it's making them kind of us all think about how we carry that work in ourselves as well as giving it out to others. So a few invitations here really. Um, we're anointed to show people how much they're valued by God. And I think like, this can be done on mass, like there's amazing preachers like Billy Graham and stuff who communicate this like to thousands of people at the same time. But it might be that for us specifically, we we kind of use this anointing like in a much more kind of slower, small, like not smaller, but like a more kind of one-on-one way. It might be that in your lives, you might interact with people just like you might see a few people at your work or in your house or the streets that you walk down each day and that the people you interact with there, like you are anointed to communicate their worth to them at, like as you go. So it might be that you see someone on the street every week and you can tell that they're, you know, they're, they're poor, they're destitute, they're finding it hard, like 
you're anointed to communicate their worth to them as a child of God. I hope that makes sense. There's a lot of blank faces I like. <laughs> <laughs> Great blank. <blame>. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so consistency, being consistent with the people around us. Like in, my, in the shop where I work, I interact with homeless people all the time, people with, who've got um, mental health issues. And it, you know, it's a task for me to be like, communicate to these people that they have, they've got work, they've got value, and it does, it can be frustrating, but it's like a week on, you know, it's a <coughs> bit of a grind, but just to remember that that is what we're called here to do. We're called to lift these people up and be there with them and for them, be a listening ear, be encouraging to them. Um, yeah. So then they can go on their own journey of freedom and healing. Okay. So, next one. So yeah, I put out these three invitations because I feel like this, this verse and this idea of anointing is actually an invitation to us. So, the first invitation is to receive this anointing. And I think that to actually kind of embody something you kind of have to like sit with it for a bit and be like, I'm anointed, like I'm actually anointed through the Holy Spirit to, to do these things, to proclaim freedom and proclaim, you know, and, and release the captives out of darkness. So I think the fact is just kind of the thing of like meditating on this a bit throughout the week and being like, I am actually an anointed person um, to do this and to really kind of embodied that as part of our identity of who we are as Christians that we you know we have received this anointing. It might not have been in a fancy ceremony where you someone comes up to you and gets some sort of incense and waves it over your head and stuff. But it is just part and parcel of becoming part of the family. So that's the first invitation. The invitation is to receive this anointing and realise that you are you all of us here are part of it. The second invitation <coughs> is to really go on a journey with the Holy Spirit, focusing on our own worth. So I was thinking about some of the amazing people who've been anointed to talk and preach and have massive ministries all over the world, and who actually haven't dealt with their own stuff, their own skeletons in their closet. And then it all comes out, and it's an absolute mess, because it's like just this awful stuff that might have been going on underneath, and, you know, it, it can completely ruin ministries and it can really hurt people. Um, so this is so important for us. And I was thinking, like, I was saying to Nick yesterday, like, we have to be really diligent to look at ourselves and be like, are there places in my life where I am not free and I'm still in the darkness and I don't know the good news for myself? Like, are there areas that we're acting small or... Um, acting when living out of fear or insecurity or shame and this is just really important because if we're going to be if we're going to be doing this thing, which is like going out and you know going out and doing what God's calling us to do we do need to make sure that we are we are in freedom otherwise it's kind of like the blind leading the blind a bit um, and there's loads of resources available to us like we're in this amazing community of people who any one of us could call at any one of the other people and they'd, you know, in the week we'd be able to meet up and pray and work through things like Claire runs the wholeness course, like there's so many um, resources available to us to actually really go on this journey. And I recently, like, I recently had a day when I felt absolutely terrified and I felt fear <coughs> bubbling up and I just was in a mess. And instead of just kind of carrying on with my day, my evening, I just got into my room I turned off my phone, I sat in my room and I was like, right then God, like, let's go at this. And it was really, really um, healing to do that. It was a really healing, amazing moment where God really showed me parts of myself that, um, I, that you know, he wanted to heal. And since that day, I feel like those parts of me have really changed. And I'm being able to notice in my life where, where that, the impact of that is happening. So... That is really important. That's the second invitation. So let, let's, you know, let's focus on our own worth because we're children. We've got, we've, we've got an identity. And like, are we living up to that? When I was think, when I was thinking about this and writing it, I actually felt like God said, um, 
to stand up straight and stop whinging and whining um, and hold our heads up. Um, um, so yeah, I don't know if that speaks to anyone, but just to kind of like carry this anointing. And if you think about like them back way back when when they got anointed by as a king uh, and all the like uh, ceremony and pomp uh, and stuff. Uh, uh, and that feeling of them being anointed as the king, like chosen by God to be the king over the people, like that would have been like an amazing honour. And it's kind of like us all inhabiting that within ourselves, that we are these kind of we've been given an, an honoured thing through this anointing, you know. So let's stop acting small, let's carry this and let's stand up straight and really go out there with this. So that's the second invitation. And I did actually write that I remember this verse for Romans 8, 19. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. So I'm feeling like, you know, let's really embody this anointing. Like, we are the children of God and creation is groaning for us to be revealed. So let's do that. <laughs> and then the third invitation is to communicate this worth to those around us to proclaim the good news. So yeah, that's what I've already been talking about, which is that, you know, that is what we're being called to do. That's the anointing. Like, to go out there to communicate and bringing it back to Darren because he's just so good at this is like kind of like he's, um, he's just a friend he's a listening ear he spends time with people he smiles he gives he creates platforms and also like I also put giving opportunities to people so it might be that in order to like really kind of do this it might be that you could give an opportunity to someone around you that would kind of lift them up and build them up um. So those are the three invitations. Um, I feel like I went through that really quickly. I don't actually know how long I've been talking. Yeah, enough time. <laughs> Battling on. Um, so I thought I would pray, but I've um. got some oil here, and I know this is quite like high church. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, as a symbolic act, if you want to, I'm going to pass these around, and if you go, is it? Is there another side? Is that it? What's it? Oh, right, okay. Oh, yeah, I've written it here. So I thought what we could do is pass the oil around and each person beside you do a little mark on the forehead of the person next to you and say the words, I anoint you to proclaim the good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the captives, if you can remember that. Thank you. I'm just um, yeah, so just read some of this and anoint them. Because we are all, you know, we're all in the priesthood, so we can do this. And it's not like the oil is some sort of sacred, holy oil. It's not anything power in the oil. It's more like the act of it. But like Doug was saying, it is a powerful act, like baptism, you know, like when you get baptised, it has got power in it. It's like we're showing people. And so this is like an opportunity to, like the invitation number one, to really like embody this anointing by this little act of, um, of the anointing oil. <laughs> so I hope that will make sense. If you, don't want, if you don't want oil, just pass it to the next person. It's almond oil, in case anyone's learned almond. I don't know if almond allergies are a thing, but... <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna pray. Um, thank you, God, that we are part of your royal lineage and we are anointed to proclaim good news and to be communicators of worth around us and I really pray that um, as we do this um, symbolic oil anointing that on each other that we'll really embody that um, calling that you've given to us and that um, think about how we could really go out there to the community around us, the people around us and how we can um, proclaim freedom to them and, and this sense of amazing worth that each one of us is worth so much that you would send your son to die for us. So thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.